A few weeks have passed since Intel's Broadwell e-processors landed, and sadly, it hasn't all just been a mistake. $1,750 US dollars is the correct price for the 6950X, so that's disappointing to say the least. Thankfully, there are alternatives for those seeking core-heavy machines, and the Xeon E5 2670 that I looked at more than three months ago now is still one of the best options, given processors can be had second-hand for as little as 60 US or 80 Australian dollars each, and there's still a massive oversupply. I recently landed a pair for 150 Aussie, which included shipping. Additionally, I spent $570 plus shipping on a brand new dual socket Supermicro MBD X9 DR3 motherboard from Newegg.com and a further $200 on 32GB of DDR3-1866 memory. All up, the guts of this workstation build has totaled $920, so not bad given the 5960X costs $1,500 alone and the new 6950X is staggering $2,550. For my American viewers, the bulk of the dual Xeon E5 2670 system came to a total of $660. So, the question that remains now is how well do the Dual Xeon E5 2670s tackle professional level video editing in Premiere Pro CC? Let's find out. These results are based on a Premiere Pro CC workload provided by Intel based on professional level video editing using 4K 30fps H.264 MP4 footage recorded at a bit rate of approximately 80 megabits per second. The input file sizes total 1.9 gigabytes and total 2 minutes and 21 seconds. The audio stream is 1536 kilobits per second, 48 kilohertz, 16-bit stereo in WAV format. The performance test measures the time to export the entire clip to a 4K H.264 MP4 format and the output is a high quality 4K video file. 
The benchmark is GPU accelerated using the new GeForce GDX 1080. The results, while not mind-blowing, are impressive. For roughly the asking price of the Core i7-5960X, it's possible to build a complete dual Xeon E5-2670 workstation and receive a similar level of performance. In total, we are only seeing around 60-70% to CPU utilisation on the dual Xeon system, so there's more performance to be had in applications that can take advantage of all 16 cores with their hyper-threading support. Clearly, the 6950X is a better option in terms of performance when compared to the dual Xeons. It's hands down faster, more fuel efficient, and of course can be overclocked for even greater results. Still, as I've made abundantly clear by now, the price is a real stinker, and as such, the 6950X is far from a cost-effective means of arming a workstation with more than 8 cores. This is where the dirt cheap Xeon E5 2670 processors come into play. Still, in order to really take advantage of the extra processing power, you'll want to be working with very high quality source files, professional grade stuff really. The 6950X becomes an even harder sell when you factor in the full system cost of the dual Xeon build. Everything shown in this video, as in the Xeon build, totaled just shy of 1400 US dollars or 2000 Australian dollars. That includes two Xeon E5 2670 processors, the Supermicro dual socket motherboard, two Noctua U12 DX i4 coolers, 32GB of DDR3 memory, the Silverstone ST80F power supply, and the massive Lian Li D8000 workstation chassis. So, you could build this system, or pull out another $400 out of your wallet to buy the Core i7-6950X, and of course, that buys you just the processor. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to yet another Hardware Unbox video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTube